Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Terry Shea from the Thai Martial Arts Association. Today we're going to uh, do another set of Sante, uh, technique number two, and we're going to add these incrementally to the uploads to Facebook since I can only upload about five minutes at a time before they call a limit to me. So I can't show you the whole set of techniques and forms at once. It's going to have to be one by one. With me today is Levi Dryden, who is uh, working on his black belt and right now is considered a junior black belt. Let's leave right here. The first thing we're going to do today is technique number two. Actually, it's not the first thing. It's one of the things we're going to do. Technique number two, which is a medium uh, brush block. Um, since the techniques are set up in two sets of three, high, medium, and low, high, medium, and low. The very first thing we're going to do is address an issue from one of our students, Monica Moore, who asked to show a demonstration of how to get out of a rear naked choke when somebody's lifting you up off the ground. How do you get out of that? What are your possibilities? When you're in a rear naked choke, once it's applied, you have about three seconds to respond before the blood supply gets shut off to your head. And although you can breathe, without the blood supply to your brain, you're going to go to sleep. You've got about three to four seconds for that to happen unless you can loosen the grip. So let's take a look at how we can, how we can make this work. OK, whoever can see this. Levi's going to put me in a rear naked choke. What I'm going to do first is turn my head, tuck my chin, and bury my chin under the forearm here. Notice I'm turning towards the hand. As soon as I feel that hand go, I turn. As he starts to lift, I'm going to bend here, bend over sharply, preventing him from lifting. And I'm going to grab whatever I can, hand, thumb, whatever, and I'm going to pry it apart here. I'm going to pull that finger across and over. Notice what I've got here, rolling the hand and lifting. I'm going to step over, and here is my grab. What I can do from here is any number of things, but first and foremost, I can simply break the arm by pulling down sharply. What else can I do? If I were to grab, counter grab the hand, I can drive the old hand straight into the ribs here, come up here, and what I've got here is a takedown. Now all I have to do is step across and pull, and the person's going to fall. So that's one method of doing this. Let's say we can't get to this. We need to distract the person from applying full pressure. We, we don't see it coming. We don't have time to turn our head. We have our hands free. So what's the next option? The next option is to grab and start pinching all you can. Get that hand loose, pull down. And what I'm going to do is notice I'm still bent, preventing him from lifting me up. Even if he tries, my hips are in the way of his. So, as he does this, I'm simply going to step to the side and I'm going to drop and pull my weight off to the side here. Then I'm going to pull down sharply on the arm. Notice where I am now. I'm in a place he doesn't want me to be. From here, I can do pretty much anything I want. I can go in here and down. I can take the leg, I can flip him over, I can do all sorts of nasty little things with him and pretty much make a mess out of his day. That's just a start. Two techniques. The most important thing is don't let the grip tighten. Once that happens, you're done. So immediate reaction is bring the hips backwards, bend over. As soon as that arm goes around your neck, drop down into a crouch. If I try to pick him up, I can do it very easily simply by leaning back and cranking. If he bends over, I can't get him up. I don't have the leverage because his center of gravity has dropped from way up here to way down there. I can't lift him. So the simple act of bending is enough to prevent him from picking me up off the ground. Now I'm not going to be able to stomp on his feet because I'm using those for balance, but what I have is my hands, my ability to throw, and my ability to pinch like a little crab. So if I can take a little piece of that thigh and just pinch it and twist, I would guarantee you he's going to loosen up. Once that happens, the world is wide open to you. 
It's a matter of knowing what techniques to use when, what's appropriate for the situation. Start again. He grabs. I bend. Can I simply hold my hand here, drop my chin, and step around here? Now, there's no way he can bend over, but I've got a leg. So, I can use my leverage to dump him. Can he hold on? Yes, he can. But what happens when he does? Now, grab. For some reason, he doesn't want to hold on. The instinct is to try and grab something besides the head, shoulders, whatever. If he does that, land on top of him. He won't appreciate it. It'll hurt. But it'll get the job done. After that, you're on top. Make use of it. So there's our first rear naked choke escape. Admittedly, no escape from a rear naked choke is perfect and never will be. But once it's fully applied, you start to lose consciousness. Your options are gone. You have to be quick and get to them before that happens. So there are my two techniques on the rear naked choke and how to get out of it. Turn, grab. Grab a pinky. It doesn't matter what you grab. If I were to, let's try this. Grabs. I've got my hand here. My chin is tucked in. The other thing I've got is this. Ah! I can drive straight over the ribs here. Once this is loosened up, I can grab the opposite arm. I step back here. I can simply step back, lift the elbow, and throw. All this is a matter of getting this guy to let go, of your, let go of your neck. Having somebody around your neck is a very uncomfortable and disconcerting situation. It's a panic-inducing situation. Once you feel the oxygen leave your brain, you'll panic just before you go to sleep. If it's held on too long, say 20 seconds, you're going to suffer permanent brain damage. Your ability to act fast, right away, without hesitation, is a matter of training and life and death at this point. This is not a matter of getting into a fight. This is a matter of possibly dying. Once you lose consciousness, you have no control. That person can do whatever you want. 